Um, a little known fact about Bank of America um, prime brokerage is you hear prime and you think hedge funds, but Merrill Lynch back in the day built its prime brokerage business around proprietary trading firms and the market makes community. And then it grew its business from there to hedge funds, asset managers, et cetera, to be very, very big business globally. Um, when I think about the digital asset space and what's going on in that space, the market making community are very, very big in that space already. Um, and they were knocking on the door of Bank of America prime brokerage for us to do something for them then. Uh, it led me down the path of looking at Copper's technology. And I have to say, when I actually looked at what they had, the capabilities and what they could do, it blew my mind, very, very impressive um, capabilities. And it was kind of going back to what I remember in the early 2000s when we built it out for uh, Merrill Lynch. Um, what I always say is prime in traditional markets was not built in a day. In fact, it took 15, 20 years to get to where it is now. Um, clearly in crypto, it's gonna be much, much quicker because this ecosystem moves very, very quickly. So where are we and what looks the same? Look, the way that transactions happen and the way they settle, is mind blowing. It's market leading. It's changed the way that the industry does business. Um, I think the trading capabilities are getting there now. Um, very good trading capabilities and they're, they're growing in stature every day. Um, when you start looking at some of the things in prime brokerage that you know the customers really care about, which is stock borrow or token borrow or um, you know margin lending, those types of things, I think there's some work to be done there. The industry has grown currently around sort of credit decisions and credit lending. Not, not entirely, there is some collateralized lending going on, but prime brokerage traditionally, its ethos is collateralized lending, looking at those pool, that pool of collateral, extending a loan, doing it in a, in a kind of conservative fashion so that if there is a dislocation in the market, when the loan is pulled back, the collateral is there to support that lending um, scenario. So I think that's the area that doesn't quite look like prime. However, the front end, you know, the, the trading, the, you know, the finality of settlement, um, the fact that there, everything happens uh, T0, that's extremely innovative. It's the second part of Prime that needs to come. You know, this, this, this ecosystem moves at a lightning pace. And, the, you know, it was a, it's a tech innovation that is going to disrupt not only financial markets, it's going to disrupt insurance, real estate, et cetera. And with that, you have to, you know, blend the best of, I guess, the technology, but also the, um, the uh, sort of financial capabilities and, 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 and industry know-how. And with that in mind, I think, you know, some of the products that have been, have come to market lending assets on a credit type decision, I understand why they're there, but you know, it's created disruption over the last few weeks. It's not the only thing, but it's part of it. And I think firms like Copper can start to be part of that solution because they, they have a custodian that is vertically integrated. You know, we can do things with the collateral in terms of securing them in a safe custody way and then collateralize um, loans, collateralize margin loans, et cetera. So, you know, these things have to evolve and, and all industries, you know, they grow, they have problems, they, the creative destruction uh, moves it on. But yeah, I think um, that's the next thing that needs to be solved. And certainly, uh, you know, Copper is one, one of the firms I think that's going to do that. I guess the, this whole industry needed a bit of creative destruction. So there's been a lot of creativity, which drives the innovation. But unfortunately now there's a clearing mechanism and it's gonna destroy some of the firms whose business models were potentially not quite right. So, you know, from an institutional perspective, which is where Copper pitches itself, you know, we're kind of, we knew it was coming. We, you know, we're sad that people have lost money around it. You know, we are the institutional rails for um, digital assets and, and, and cryptocurrency. So, you know, we're looking forward to the next um, innovation in this space. And uh, I guess, you know, everyone now kind of realizing that things need to be done in a different way. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's, it's not good, but we've seen it before. Um, and I think, you know, the industry will get through it. What I think is different this time is when you look at an event like this, everyone's here and still interested in digital assets. Whereas before everyone said it's going to zero, it's over. That's not the case anymore. I think everyone's looking at this as a good entry point into the market and the levels are starting to be an interesting sort of point where clients want to, uh, want to get into the market. So if anything, we're seeing more conversations, not less because the traditional client base that understand the right entry point for an asset are now ringing us up saying, look, can we move forward the account only? Can you help us with this? Can you help us with that? Because they can see this, this sell-off is the perfect opportunity to get in and let it rebuild again for the next cycle.